Hello everyone, and welcome to Court Climbs. This is episode 5 of the New River Gorge Files, a series designed to help show you crags and routes around the new that you might want to climb at. In this episode, we're climbing at Third Buttress in the Upper Meadow. We're in the parking lot and we're about to do the approach into Third Buttress. There are a bunch of 10s and then there's an 11 called Mr. Cute that Tara told me that she thinks that I'd really like. So this is actually our second day at the new for this trip because when we arrived at camp yesterday, it had just stopped pouring rain. So we opted to go for a hike instead of climbing. But that brings us to today. So we're walking to Third Buttress and we passed the boulder and it's dripping wet. So we'll see how this goes. Luckily, when we showed up to the crag, the rock was bone dry. And so we hopped on a route that we thought was a 510. But the route was, well, I'll give you a minute to look at it. What do you think? I don't actually think that any of the holds were all that bad or any of the moves were very difficult, except for one part towards the top where you had to do a big move up to a small slot like pocket that you had to be pretty precise on. Yeah, so I don't know what's up, but I'm feeling like very scared on lead today. Just kind of bolt to bolt at that guy. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to keep climbing things and see how the rest of the day goes. But that felt very, I was very wary of everything. All the drugs were there. So our friends, David and Chris, just came down. We didn't know they were down here. And they pointed out that we were absolutely not on the route that we thought that we were on. I think you guys are definitely on Tsunami Bob, because it doesn't, <laughs> note how Mount Project was like, there are three bolts and anchors and there are five on this. This route starts by this perfectly circular hole. Mr. Cute is a very approachable route for the 11A grade. Unlike a few of the other 11As I've been on at the new, it feels like the biggest obstacle to sending this guy is just fighting the pump and taking advantages of the rest when you can. There are basically two ways to do the start of this route. One is to traverse all the way to the right of the bolt and then work your way back and left to get up to the second bolt. Or the much, much harder way of going straight up the bolt line and doing a fairly big dyno from a tiny crimp where you make use of a super high heel hook. David, who climbs mid-12s on a good day, tried it and was like, absolutely no way that that is an 11A doing it that way. We all agreed and traversed right. I really, really like this route. What did you climb down that way? We started on Quaffender's Dream because it was open and like it's a classic. I really liked it. We did, it was Supermoon, I think, and it's like... 60 feet of pretty forgettable climbing but the top <laughs> the top is amazing no no it's like you kind of are just climbing up with all these rests to get to the base of like a 40 foot 11 ab so it's like pretty punchy and cruxy and it like i thought it was very good So we're headed out for the day, but that was really fun. Uh, also, I'm really excited because Madrock just told me that they would send me a new pair of the drones, which I'm badly in need of. Yeah, that needs, that needs replaced. They're falling apart, so I can't wait. We ticked another sandwich off of the Secret Sandwich Society menu before heading back to camp to do a crossword together. 14 across, French girlfriend. A blank, blank, blank. I don't know. Two dum dum. What's your flavor guess? Orange. Cherry. Possibly orange. Mine's watermelon. I'm pretty sure mine's orange. We were close. All right, today we are down on the right side of Third Buttress and we're gonna start with a handful of 10s and a nine plus to warm up. This one that we're hopping on right now is called King Liken Me and it's a 10A and it kind of like starts on the right side and curves its way up and left. Uh, then there's the nine and the next route over is another 10. Also Jed tells me that I'm supposed to admit to forgetting my helmet. So I have to wear his, it's gonna be very sweaty. King Like and Me has a fairly dynamic start, but gets less so that way as you move up the wall. There are a ton of rests, and in the middle, some fun side pull types of moves on a flake. 
There was one part three-fourths of the way up where the hold is a jug, but if it's your first time on it, you might not realize it because it's a bit blind until you commit to it. So we brought blocks of cheese to the crag. I said, I feel like a mouse eating this cheese. Jed said, cartoon mice eat Swiss cheese that's yellow, but in real life, I've never seen a piece of Swiss cheese that's yellow. It's always been white. Like, that's a very good point. So let us know in the comments, have you ever seen Swiss cheese in real life that's yellow, that has the holes? I definitely think that the 10 on the left feels easier than the 9 plus. Italian Vero had a cool start up the left side of this flake, which some would argue isn't the intended route, but I would argue that I can't really hear them. What did they say? Besides the beginning, it feels like fairly straightforward climbing, and I think it was my favorite out of the three routes that we climbed on this wall. So Jed and I are extremely confused because we've been at Third Buttress since around 9.30 this morning, and there's no one here and it's 1.30. We haven't seen a single soul the whole rest of the day. We've also decided that we're gonna go to the right here and try this three-star 10C. This 10C looks epic. It's super tall. And in Mountain Project, some people were saying that the top's like super run out, 25 feet falls. And I'm not quite making fun of that yet, but I'm also, I, I'm interested to see how accurate that is because when I went up, on this route right next to it, it didn't look all that bad, but those are like famous last words, right? <laughs> Maybe I'll get up there and it'll be terrible. So it was terrible, fun and awful. So fun and awful that my camera timed out and failed to record it. I literally spoke too soon. The top of that route, I cannot get past it. The thing that's freaky about it is the swing. If you take the fall, it's sideways. I, I'll take falls down, I don't care about that, but sideways falls. <sighs> we decided to head further down the crag, and on the way we passed a notable 512 that Tara recently sent called Skull and Hole, because, well, because there's a skull and a hole at the base of the route. This is a 510A called Power Power Bar. Power Bar Power. Power Bar Power. Power Bar Power, despite the intimidating route name, was really only a powerful route towards the start. Then it chilled out a lot and kind of turned slabby. All was well until I went to put my hand on a hold and... <laughs> so my friend Tara and I have this story about this crab called Big Daddy. And Big Daddy was a real life crab. He is the longest, biggest, crab in the world and he died in 2016 but he was like 10 feet wide it's massive i'll put a picture of him on the screen big daddy has crept his way into all of our climbing stuff so we'll be like you have to climb this route or big daddy's gonna get you or oh like if we run together oh i better run faster or big daddy's gonna chase you and today on the route there was a real life big daddy it was this giant spider, it was really high up the wall. Ah, Big Daddy was real and he was not welcome. It is time to go to Secret Sandwich Society. I think I'm on sandwich six out of 14 on their menu. And when I get to 14, when I've had every sandwich on their menu, then I'm gonna buy myself a Secret Sandwich Society shirt and I can't wait. If you liked this episode, check out the rest of them here. As always, thank you so much for watching and stay hyped.